Welcome to this BBTV Global Network Customer Onboarding Trilogy, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. This is episode two in the trilogy with author Donna Weber. Hello again, Donna. Hello, Malcolm. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, well, I am enjoying our chat, but there's no doubt about it because I, I'm so I have been for all my life entranced with customer care, customer experience, customer loyalty. Donna, I'm anxious to maximize my time with you. So straight in with question two for episode two. Now, we now know of the importance and the return on investment of customer onboarding. But where does it start? And what's your six stage framework for implementation? So I like to start onboarding before the deal even closes. So uh, in our previous episode, we were talking about, you know, customers are often sold this big vision, you know, all the promises of what a product's going to do for them. And then, you know, they buy the product and they're kind of left wondering, well, how do I use this product? How do I get value? Where do I go from here? So uh, what I like to do is start to help the customers understand the path to success, to see the path to success even before the deal closes. Now that might even help you shorten your sales cycle. I worked with a company earlier this year. They provide a marketing platform for real estate agents, but I was talking to the customer, um, to, excuse me, I was talking to the chief financial officer, the CFO, and he shared that he was buying a product. So he was buying a SAP, SaaS product for digi- for digital signatures for contracts. And when during the buyer journey, during the sales cycle, the sales rep showed him, here's your dedicated customer success manager. Here's what our plan for onboarding and engagement looks like. And it was all there on a website with a photo of the uh, CSM, the customer success manager. In the contract, it detailed, this is how we're gonna work together. This is how many hours each of these steps takes. And this is what you need to do. And this is how many hours your time takes. And he said, this company has their stuff together. I want to work with them. So Mm. that's what we want. We wanna start to instill the confidence in our prospects, in our customers, even before the deals close, that we know what we're doing, that we've done this before, that we're in good hands. So, for example, let's say I go and meet up with a new personal trainer and, you know, I'm sold the big vision, but then, you know, the first session, he's like, hey, Donna, what do you want to do? I'm like, what? You know, like I'm paying the big bucks for a professional to tell me what to do. I'm expecting you've done this before and I'm here. I want a proactive, prescriptive approach, right? So that's what our customers want, too. You know, we're all busy these days, right? I don't know about you, but between work and home, there's a lot going on. And so when I buy a new product, I don't want to have to have a lot of figuring it out. I want to be guided to success. And so when companies find that there's issues where the implementations are taking long or customers are frustrated, they're pausing payments, they're canceling payments, we move that all upstream. So we address onboarding even before the deal closes. Excellent. Yeah. Now, I particularly like what you say in your book about the fact that um, customer service, customer experience, you can actually, uh, it doesn't have to cost you, you can charge it to the customer. Just explain that, please. Yeah, well, the reality is that people value things when they pay more. Now, you, you, you need to know your audience, right? It's not like, mm. you, you know, if, if you have the low cost solution, then your, your audience may not agree with that. But if you can possibly provide some premium services, then customers might be willing to pay for that. I worked with a company, they're a learning technology company, and the customers, I interviewed their customers, and they said that they were tearing their hairs out trying to implement this platform by the deadline. And then they got it all done. It was just a whole you know, mess and very stressful. Afterwards, they found out that there was a professional services package that would have done that all for them. And they would have gladly paid for that. So it's important to know um, your audience. It's important to let them know what's available. Now, a lot of companies I work with think, oh, well, we'll charge the, the large companies, these big enterprise companies. But sometimes the smallest companies need the most help. They don't have a whole team to implement your product. They need someone to be the administrator. There might be an opportunity to have managed services They might need you to migrate their data and they'd be happy to pay for it because they just don't have the bandwidth. 
So it's important to know your audience and what they need and want. And if you charge for it, you know, when I work with companies, they say that customers that pay for onboarding show up for their meetings, they're accountable for their tasks, they get the job done, they're partnering for success. So it really yeah. does make a difference. Excellent. Yes, I totally agree with you. Thanks, Donna. Now, let me remind our audience of your URL, your website address, which obviously viewers you can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's, Donna, D-O-N-N-A, Weber, W-E-B-E-R, DonnaWeber.com. Donna's book, this one, Onboarding Matters, How Successful Companies Transform New Customers into Loyal Customers is published by Springboard Press. It's my experience that if you don't have a culture and a structure within your business for that loyalty creation, then it will all fail. Everyone will do it their own way or not at all. And that inconsistency is worse than nothing being in place. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Malcolm. <laughs>